as they say. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. In the January 1939 edition, of Desert Magazine, Charles Nehuis, interviewed Petra Sosia, and Jim Tucker, at the Arizona Pioneer Home, in Prescott. Jim and Petra tell the story of Petra's first husband, Santiago Sosia, and his trip into the desert, to search for Royas, filled with gold dust but he ends up finding a ship, buried in the sand. The Arizona, Pioneer's Home, was established in 1909, by the territorial government of Arizona, as a home for the aged and infirm, to repay the faithful and long-time Arizona residents who helped pioneer and build the state. As it turns out, Jim Tucker and Petra were just that, Arizona pioneers. In the 1880 census, it shows that at the age of 15, Jim Tucker was living in Tombstone Village, Pima, Arizona, living on Fremont Street. I don't know if he and his family was living there on October 26, 1881, to witness the gunfight at the OK Corral, but then again, it is possible. In the 1900 census, it shows him living in Yuma, as a widow, with a seven-year-old son, who was born in 1893 in California. The story starts out, with Petra and Santiago, living and working in Tecate, Mexico, around 1892. The reason they were living there was because, Santiago, had killed a man in Los Angeles, and he fled into Mexico to escape the officials. Petra, soon joining him there. Interesting enough, but how true is this? I know it sounds like the typical scoundrel of the time, trying to evade the law, and I know it adds the drama and excitement to the story, however this time, it's all true. What the 1939 article didn't go into detail with was. In 1879, at the old San Gabriel mission, Vicente Bermudez was murdered, by Santiago Socia, who made good his escape. The coroner's jury, fastened the crime upon Socia. But he disappeared completely, and had evaded arrest all these years. A newspaper article describes the incident. As reported by the Los Angeles Evening Express. January 24, 1879. Deputy Sheriff, Sellies, informs us that Vicente Bermudez, the man who was shot by Santiago Socia, at the ball, at the old mission, last Saturday night, died from his wound on Tuesday morning. The murder, as Mr. Sellies described it, was a most brutal, and cold-blooded one. The quarrel commenced in the ballroom, from which Bermudez and Socia, retired to a neighboring bar room, to fight it out. Both were armed, but through the persuasion of friends, they were induced to give up their weapons, and agreed to make friends, and after shaking hands, took a drink together to cement their reconciliation. Socia however was insincere, and treacherously sent off his brother, to get him another pistol. Bermudez was informed of this fact but he said, there will be no further difficulty between us, we have made up. In a few minutes, a brother of Socia, who was standing at the door, made some insulting remark to Bermudez to which the latter replied, when the man with whom he had made friends but a few minutes before, drew the pistol brought to him by his brother, and fired, the ball striking poor Bermudez near the navel and passing out at the back. The murderer then ran out of the door where he was met by two or three armed friends, and the whole party fled. Back to the story. It's 1892, Santiago and Petra are living in Tecate, and Santiago is working in the fields, when he meets up with a beggar, named Leonardo, who told Santiago that he had a map from a padre in California, that showed where Indians had hidden some oyas filled with gold dust, when the Spanish stampeded them. The oyas were supposed to be hidden in the mountains, just across the line, north from Tecate. Leonardo tells Santiago, that they will have to take two other men, Loreto Alvarez, who had the horses, and Juan Morales, and his little boy, which was named Juan also. Well the four men and young boy take off from Tecate, and are gone for two months. When Santiago returns, he begins to tell her the story, we were looking for the Oyas of gold, in every canyon where the map showed, but we could not find them. Then one day, in one canyon, we find a ship, 
a big boat, in the sand. Then I say, Santiago, you tease me. He say, no Petra. It is the truth of God. I find a ship, and stand on the front. It is ten feet high, and the back it is buried in the sand. The commels were big round iron things on the sides. Bright and not rusted. Not like any metal I have seen before. Petra paused, then extended her arm. Her other hand measured it at the shoulder, and she said, Santiago, he do this, and say, this big Petra. She again described the site as Santiago saw it. A narrow box canyon, with high sheer walls, and a sandy bottom, and, partially buried there, a boat of ancient appearance, an open boat but big, with round metal discs on its sides. So, look for writing on the wall of the canyon, high up. Too high to reach from the ground, and too far down to reach from the top. It is not Indian writing, nor English, but some strange writing which must be made by the man of the strange ship. Look for it. What happened to Santiago after his trip, to look for gold in 1892? In March of 1896, the sheriff of Orange County, learned that Socius had been seen in San Diego County. He advised Sheriff Jennings, of this fact, and asked his cooperation in capturing the Mexican, who was a fugitive from justice with a price on his head of $500. Jennings then sent word and authority to Deputy Sheriff Frank Thing, at Potrero, telling him to arrest Socia. On April 16, 1896, Deputy Sheriff Frank Thing, aged 23, was accompanied by his brother, Sam Thing, who was only 19 at the time, went to the border above Tecate and found Socia in a blacksmith shop, on the American side, with his horse tied outside. Frank Thing went inside, first handing his revolver to his brother. He ordered Socius to surrender, and asked him if he had any weapons on him. As the officer was reading the warrant, Socia reached under his overcoat, at the same time starting for his wagon outside. Sam knowing him to be a desperate man, and believing his brother and himself, to be in danger from the movements of the man, fired two shots, both taking effect, and the last one causing instant death. On December 14, 1896, Sam Thing was arrested, and jailed, on a charge of murder, and bail was refused. He was arrested, on the insistence of the Mexican consul, acting on orders from Mexico. The complainant, was Sacramento Martinez, who was said to be a sister of Santiago Socia. March 26, 1897, The Los Angeles Times, Santa Ana the trial of something at San Diego, for the killing of Santiago Socia, resulted Wednesday. In his acquittal. Between April of 1896 when Santiago was killed by deputies, and 1904, when Petra marries Jim Tucker, I can't find any other records. On April 2, 1904 Jim Tucker and Petra Ballesteros were married in Yuma. I am assuming that she was using her maiden name Ballesteros, later, after her death. Her obituary read Valestero, may be the same name, just spelled differently. But it wasn't Socia, or Socius. Apparently, Jim and Petra had a good marriage, and they lived in Yuma until 1930, when they retired to the Arizona Pioneers' home, in Prescott. In their interview, with Desert Magazine, Jim nor Petra ever said how far the men traveled from Tecate, in the two months that they were gone. Their plan was to go, just across the line, north from Tecate, into the mountains. They must have gone a lot further than that, to stay gone two months. Places they could have went, to where the gold might have been hidden, possibly, the sand caves, they are only 35 miles away. Pinto Canyon is also a good place. Pinto Canyon is about 35 miles. Another is Split Mountain. That would be around 45 miles away. And let's not leave out the obvious, Cane Break Canyon. This is of course was the approximate location where Myrtle Botts says she saw the ship, and this would be around 30 to 35 miles away. It is hard to believe how, a ship might have gotten stranded, in a canyon, above sea level. However Myrtle Botts and Santiago do agree on the type, or the style of boat, and the description of the location. 
Jim Tucker passed away in April 5, 1938. On November 21, 1938, Petra passes away. She was 80. The paper stated. She was born in Los Angeles December 6, 1857. Her father, was Jesus Velestero, member of an aristocratic, California Spanish family. Her mother, was Antonia Silva, of the well-known, Silva family of Southern California. Mrs. Tucker's only surviving relative, is a brother, Jose Velestero, who lives in the Imperial Valley, California. James and Petro are buried in the Arizona Pioneer Home Cemetery, in Prescott.